You're watching Chewing the Cud with Dominic Berry and Mike Bennion Rowe. And by the time we got outside, it was flapping around like a wizard's sleeve. Oh, hello and welcome to Chewing the Cud. Uh, hello, Mike. Hello, Dominic. Thank you for having me back. It's so good to be here. What was flapping about like a wizard's sleeve is my question. Oh, you know poets never repeat themselves, you know. Well, I've heard. <laughs> it's so lovely to be on the show. I had great fun when we did the last one. Yeah, it's it's good to have good. you back. Super yeah. good, yeah. What have we got on this specific show, Mike? Well, I've got the news about someone's special faces. And then we welcome back our culinary expert with Everybody Loves Fanny. How good. We even have a game that you can play along with too. But on our screen now, you can see our contact details. It is at the Cud TV on your social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Look for Chewing the Cud. And you can see the names of people who've reached out on social media going along the bottom of the screen. But right now we've got Dominic in the showbiz. <laughs> Well, as you may remember, Mike, I'm not the biggest follower of uh, reality TV mm -hmm. shows, but when there's something that involves queer folks, I pay attention, and there has been such a thing on Married at First Sight. Oh. <laughs> I hoped you were going to go somewhere different with that, but okay. Married at First Sight. What's happened at Married at First Sight? Well, well let me ask you, Mike, when you come here for Chewing the Cud, mm -hmm. how much of your personal life do you share with our mighty viewers? All of it. All of it. Everything. All of it. Warts and all. Even though we've had letters asking me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I said the time I shared about anal prolapse was too much. It wasn't even mine. Understandable. Understandable. Well, uh, some people think they're up for doing what you so generously give Mike. No filter. No filter. <laughs> but they change their mind. And one such couple who've changed their mind are Charlie and Eve, who are the first lesbian couple to have ever featured on Married at First Sight. So they went on the show and they got together and they got married and they're not on it anymore. They're Ooh. not on it. And they're not together anymore. They've split up. So this is the uh, marriage at first sight. All smiles there. All smiles. Oh, lovely photograph. Really, really great. But, um, yeah, not only have they split up, no, not only have they left the show, but they have just gone AWOL. So the producers wanted them to do something like write a letter even if it was just something written that they could share as a mm -hmm. as a after the event they've done this and i think um i think it's eve out the two of them mm -hmm. who specifically has refused to do that who's like now nah, i'm gone i'm gone <sighs> and uh yeah i don't know i don't know i i don't know how i feel i wouldn't go on married at first sight well neither would i but that's just because i would get very annoyed very quickly just because another person's ruining my wedding day by being there. Um, <laughs> I have a very specific what is going to happen at my wedding. Which is? We haven't got time. <laughs> Fair play. It's, it, it's, it's a full two-day event, and I've got everything planned out. To the point, um, one of my exes turned around and said, oh, I want to get married in nature. I'm like, no, not happening. It's like, oh, I don't want to. And everyone can come and wear whatever makes them feel comfortable and however they Their feel. own choices. I'm like, no, I'm like, that's not going to happen. People, if it's my wedding, I'm laying out thousands of pounds to put on this event. You are coming in what I say mm. you're wearing, your colour scheme and choice. And I don't care if it's an inconvenience. It's my day. <laughs> reason why I'm not getting married, number two. Number one, being single. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we'd never go on married at first sight. Right. Mm. I also take umbrage. Ooh, that's a word. Um, at people that go on to these reality shows and then decide that they're not going to take part. And instead of going, you know what? This isn't work. This isn't what I wanted to do. This isn't work. I'm just going to leave. They throw a hissy fit. Oh, I'm not doing. I'm not writing a letter. I don't want to write a letter. What are you going to? It's like, oh, f off. It irritates me. 
I feel a little bit the same as you because as a poet, I'm not just an actor who's given mm. a role to say, like, I write about my own life, I write about the lives of people within my community, and I, I share quite intimate details. It's not something that everybody does, get up on stage in front of a room of stages and go, I've been sad, validate me with your cheering. You know, it's a real... <laughs> oh, oh, I used to have sexual fantasies about a game player's bum. Oh, yes. Oh, What's yeah. The name of him? The big Blanca. Blanca. Oh. Yeah. There's a new bottom in my life now, but we'll come on to him in the next story. <laughs> oh, we'll don't think on. we will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I will. And that's like the saddest, <laughs> saddest thing in my life at the moment. Shall we talk about this bottom oh, then? Oh, let's do it. I'm, I'm <sighs> so desperate to share this news. <laughs> Chesney Hawks. The one and only. The one and only. Now, Can't I didn't... that away from him. I didn't have much of an opinion of him in the 90s, did you? No, not really. I, his songs irritated me. Well, his song. His song. Oh, but look at him now, 53. He's not done bad for 53. He looks a bit Mark Owen-ish. Nah, Mark Owen, what are you saying? Chesney Hawks is beautiful and he's got a new song out and in the music video... What's get, the song called? The song is called Get a Hold of Yourself. You think right. I don't know? <laughs> no, you, <I'm> think, <laughs> you think all I care about is his bottom and you're wrong? <laughs> I protested a bit too much. Really I? a lot then. Yeah. I was just going for a whole... I just wanted not to skip over the fact the new song has a name. The new song has a... Get a hold of yourself. Hashtag and I think you might have done. Gahoy. Uh-huh. Yeah? Yeah. Get a hold of yourself. It's really upbeat. So it's not really like one and only. It's a bit kind of, you know, Euro poppy, dancey okay. and all of that. And yeah, he dances around a big old house in the nud. And like uh, you see, yeah, like in Saltburn, it's a bit like that. But there's references to other movies as well. It's a really fun video. You see his bum low. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if I can look at his bum and talk at the same. Oh, my gosh. So this is a married man. This is a married man. He's left his, at, he's left his wedding ring on, I've noticed. Oh, just, to, just as a little would barrier that, that between stop you? me and him, yeah. I don't know if, if his consent. wife has done with his bottom what I could do with his bottom. I don't think. <laughs> I think that I'm sure he's happy, but he hasn't known every happiness. <laughs> he hasn't. Or happiness, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, he's got, I mean, it's so good, he's so, it's so the, the video's so good because he's naked, but he's not, like, trying to be, like, super sexy, like, serious, sultry, like, you know, it's silly, it's fun, it's, like, it's body positivity and... Um, you're very positive about his body. I'm very positive about his bottom. And I'm very positive about the... I've listened to the song without looking at the video. That's okay. how good it is. Yeah. Okay. How, and he's how going on you, tour. How tired was your arm at this point? <laughs> Destroyed. <laughs> Destroyed. Withered. Yeah, wilted. Wilted. Can't even open... Can't lift a can of Coke anymore. No, no, not an <laughs> empty one. No, no. Um, Chesney Hawks has emptied me. <laughs> So, like, on his tour, he's got coming up. Just, I just need to put it out there. Not actually. No. Just in Dom's mind. Yeah. That's yeah. happened. Not, he's yeah. doing, like, a meet and greet thing. And at first I thought, well, of oh, course I'm no. going to do that. And then I thought, I can't, I can't do that. I can't inflict so, me on Chesney. I can't Just, do... if you do go, I just need to remind you, specific, verbal and continued. How consent needs to be, right? <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Just because, yeah. yeah. Should we move on before you... Yeah. yeah. I'm really excited about the I new tell. album. I, I <laughs> think, I think mm -hmm. good on him, good on him. I think if ever you read any interviews with him, he's a guy who had like one hit when he was super young and like a bit like the far less attractive James Blunt. James Blunt comes across really well in interviews and I think, yeah, what a force for positivity. He's, he's back really. as well, James Blunt. He is. He's got some kind of competition where, like, if his reissue of his album gets to number one, you get to rename him. We'll rename what a him. dangerous thing that is to do. Yeah. Well, from renaming, mm -hmm. from renaming to uh, to debuts. Now, I know previously on the show, you mm -hmm. you have chatted a little bit about Daniel Craig's yes. new venture. He's got a show called Queer. And uh, we, we know now where that's coming out to. It's coming Ooh. to, uh, I'm going to say it wrong, uh, Mubi? Is that the, the streaming mm. service? That, is that... I think so. Yeah? Mubi, is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Naughty Netflix, I yeah. think. But... 
I'm a big fan of uh, Andrew bottom. Garfield. Right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm disinterested in, in Daniel Craig's bottom, I really? think. Uh, have well, I've not it? seen... Oh, what, yeah. what, in what movies do you see his bottom? I've not studied... Have you not seen... It's like, it's like, oh, what's not his bottom look like, Mike? Show me pictures. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's, it's a nice bottom. It's a little bit more muscular than um, the last one. No, see that's no. that's ch and I think so. So a fan of Daniel Craig is previous Spider-Man actor Andrew Garfield. He's cute. Andrew Garfield is praising his blowjob scene, Daniel Craig's blowjob scene. Okay. Now I don't know. I know that it's like an independent uh, sort of you know Blow smaller <laughs> scale. Yeah, independent. But no, no, not so. Like, he's not Prince. He's not had ribs removed. We don't you know, know that. We don't know that. We don't know that. That's, um, right. that's not serious. That's smug. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if if that is is an actor who was James Bond or Hollywood someone because you know the US is quite prudish, isn't it? But he's British. Yeah, but he's got a career in the US. I'm I'll be surprised. Andrew Garfield has said that he's seen the blowjob scene and that it is quote beautiful. Okay, good for him. Well done him. All bottoms are beautiful, all bottoms are valid. But moving on, moving on. Stick around because next up, with something completely different, we've got Mike in the buzz. Hello, you are watching Chewing the Cud with me, Dominic, and this one, Mike. And we're going to go into the deeper parts of the internet because we've got Mike with the buzz. Do you ever film yourself for things like TikTok? What a lot. Short answer, no, no. I, I mean, I do I do films on the Instagram, so that's little, comparable. Little, little film? Yeah, little, little there's okay. shorter poems I've written, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got feelings on the TikTok, but... You've got feelings Instagram. on the TikTok, yeah, okay. Yeah. But Instagram you're okay with? I know, it's a hair's breadth, isn't it's, it? It's the same thing. Um, <laughs> so, when you record... Actually, let's just try that now. Do, record yourself a video. Oh my word. On my phone. Okay, how exciting. Right, just just right. a few seconds. All right, all right, let's go, let's go, let's Ready. go. Right. Right about now, the funk soul brother. Check it out now, funk soul brother. There we go. Okay. So let's see if you've done that. Oh. Yep, you've done it. What have I done? The millennial pause. So this is something that, that Gen Zers are coming out with. Um, which is millennials always give a pause at the start of their videos when they're recording stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, they've called it the millennial pause. I do it because you literally you, you press record and you go, and you start, but you always give it that moment. And it's you can't not do it as a millennial. I'm old. <laughs> well, millennials can still be young. Okay. I mean, we're not. <laughs> and te technically, I don't even think you're a millennial. 79. Yeah, you're not even a millennial. Well, there we go. Uh, what am I? Yeah, okay. Well, it's a generational show. It's a generational. <laughs> um, but yeah, millennials do something called the millennial pause. Right. right? And they've been trying to work out why it this stitches. is stitches. Condescending <laughs> buggers. Well, f*** you, Gen Z. F*** you all. Carry on. I don't think you could do them all. <laughs> <laughs> How dare they? Yeah, well, you know what? You don't pause enough. Carry on. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chesney Hawks bottom. Chesney Hawks bottom. Oh, yeah. Oh, at, at peace. At <laughs> peace. <laughs> all right. Um, but it's, the reason why is it takes a second, right? Everyone takes that second. And they've tried to work out where it's from. And it's actually come from VCRs. Right? When you used to record... You mean Betamax, the... carry on. No, I don't. Know, so. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> when you used to record... Right, on tape decks, when you used to record things, you used to have to get it... You couldn't just press record and it record instantly. It used to take a second to actually start recording. I am aware. I was there as well. <laughs> so that's where it's from. It's from a hidden memory of going, you need to take... Pray and pause off now, and it'll start recording after a second. So you always have to be a second ahead. And that's where the millennial pause comes from. People pressing record, going subconsciously, give it a second, and then start talking. What a wise thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love that. We do that all the time on I'm, the show. I'm triggered we, by <laughs> <that>. <laughs> But I've watched it on my own little videos and things. I, 
on voice notes. I do it on vo I've looked through my WhatsApp voice notes and Gary now chuckling away because I'm going, shit, we do it as well, right? Which is that you go, you record. Hi, guys. And it's everybody does it as a millennial. Whereas Gen Z, Gen Z is a more like a little meditative straight. moment in which to enjoy just a <laughs> tiny that. bit of peace and tranquility in a world which is too hectic and vibrant for its own good. I'm sorry for being wise. <laughs> okay, it's the millennial pause. Get over it, boomer. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I just thought that was brilliant and something that, you know, I actually agree. It is quite funny to watch because now he can't unsee it. And now I've shared it with everybody, you <laughs> can't unsee it. Sorry, ruined your lives. But moving on from ruining people's lives, um, Chesney Hawks on Instagram has recently revealed some more nude pics, okay, um, where you actually see everything. That's a lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bothered about his willy. He's it's just, you know. Just... Oh, no, he separates. Oh, no, don't, Mike. <laughs> don't, not in public. Don't. don't anyway, don't. Um, this is moving on <laughs> to... Um, do you know what gurning is? Is what I do when I think about what you just said. Yeah, yeah, I'm watching that. Pause change. Um, yeah. Um, so, Egamont Crab Fair. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Is where the World Gurning Championships are held. Marvel. Okay. Um, which, and the, the rule is very, very simple. Distort your face as much as possible. Right? I want to know how much E has been taken at this, this event. Mm -hmm. But um, the winner of this event has won 19 times. Good. Right? Tommy Maddinson. Does there he, he is. pause before he gurns? Give a one second. One sec pause. Yeah, the millennial, the millennial yeah. pause. Yeah, looks like he's having a very yeah. intense poo. What? Nineteen times. I'm older than you, Mike. Considerably. <laughs> <laughs> I had as a toy. I don't know if you know this. It was a little puppet thing, just a face, right? Okay. And it had things for your your fingers. It was a gurning toy. That's how popular gurning was in the 1970s. That like rubber toys were done. So the idea was that you could scrunch the face up, not mm -hmm. dissimilar to that. And yeah, I really liked my gurning toy. So, you know, gurning was like, you know, mainstream. It was the TikTok of its day. But when you put your fingers in, did you wait a second and then start gurning? <laughs> <laughs> I love how much that's triggered. I really do. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was quite nice. That, that the so Make yourself as ugly as possible mm. and you could win a prize. Um, and if you know how to gurn, why not share that with us? We are at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now, how do you feel about pandas? I love pandas. You love pandas. Okay. Well, they have found a new type of rare breed of panda. Mm -hmm. Okay, called the barking panda. Okay, it's smaller than the giant panda, but it's still black and white. Um, and it's been found in China and displayed in a zoo. Okay, people going up to it going, oh my God, this is amazing. And the zoo going, yep, it's a rare breed of panda. Right, it's small, it barks, which is unusual because pandas mostly don't bark. Um, and then they turn around and went, mm, okay, it might not be pandas, it might be dogs we painted. Um, as they admit that they have painted <laughs> and called them barking pandas. Oh dear. I mean, so <laughs> I think if you'd have just shown me this photograph without the story, mm -hmm. I, I think I would have said, why have they painted that dog? I think that's what I would have said. Yeah. yeah. So what people were doing is they were going up going, that's quite clearly a dog that's been painted. Going to the front desk and saying, that's clearly a dog that's been painted. And like, no, 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 barking pandas. They're barking pandas. They're rare and exotic. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. The zoo were refusing to give people's money back. It got to the news. The, the zoo were saying, no, they're barking pandas. They are rare. Right? Um, only when they got, basically started to rain and the, the pandas started to get less panda-shaped and panda-colored, that the zoo were told, no, basically, they're chow-chows, aren't they? Like, yeah, they're chow-chows. Oh, my word. Which are, are cute dogs anyway, so you don't need to paint them as pandas. You do not. You, know, you don't have to paint any animal. No, no. No. How do you feel about a, a barking panda? <laughs> well, I mean, they look lovely, lovely dogs. I'm, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't need paint. Poor dogs, poor dogs, yeah. Yeah, you and silly people thinking that that would be a thing. You say poor dogs. George would love that. <laughs> Your dog? Yeah. 
he'd love to be painted black and white. Well, he's brown most of the time because mm. he plays in that much mud. Mm. And he loves a shower as well, so we'd love washing oh. because he's weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what about your favourite zoo animal then? Oh. Barking or non-barking? Yeah, yeah. All animals, all animals. Um, so on the veggie animal spectro, the hippo is quite good because uh, just like needlessly angry. Because hippos have nothing over which to be cross. Like and they really are. And I think that Vicious, if, if I had... Horrible yeah, animals. If I had... You know, there's like certain cartoons like where like people can turn into animals. That's their magic power. Mine would be the hippo. Yeah. Kind of quite... No one know, fucks with a hippo. Veggie. Raging. <laughs> they very rageful for no reason. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like... re really relatable. Really <laughs> relatable, yeah. Also big fans of Chesney Hawks Bottom. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but there's that, there's that um, baby hippo that's been in the news, like social media a lot. Mm -hmm. People are getting very excited. It's the... You know, the latest craze is being a hippo because it, it likes to play in mud and then shouts at people because it's a hippo. It's angry for no reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm an orangutan person. Oh, wow. So when I go to the zoo, always go to the orangutans as soon as I can. Yeah. But yeah, other bats. I like the bat cave mm. just because it smells so bad. <laughs> and you can annoy and scare people with just blowing by, past the rear. <sighs> That's, that's what you every now and then you show these sadistic sides of your personality. Every what a thing again. to do. Poor so, right. People. So, we go as a family because we get a family pass, right? So, my parents go with get me. Banned. And my mum is this tall when uh. I stood up. So, she's like there, right? And she's scared of the bat cave, but she goes in every time. And every time we do the same thing, we just go across her head, right? And every time she goes, <gasps> one nearly got me. <laughs> so much fun. I'm 40, nearly 42. My brother's for, over 45. And we just we just take great pleasure in scaring this 70-year-old woman um, in the middle of a dark... <laughs> 42? You were going on about me being a different generation. I'm 44. Almost, almost 42. Technically 41. Yeah, I was born in the 80s. You were born in the 70s. 70, December 1979. So you're one of the last... Last of the Gen, Gen Zers, Xs. Yeah, I'm an angry hippo. Yeah, angry hippo. <laughs> angry, angry hippo. I thought they were hungry. Anyway, that's all from the bus this week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. Uh, so you're a, a pretend bat and I'm a raging hippopotamus. That's what we've learned from that. <laughs> raging homosexual, I thought it was. But, um, stick around because we've got a game to play in our game of the week. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, you are watching Chewing the Cards. Now, it is time for us to play a little game. And the one who is going to take us through this game is a man uh, as peachy as a Chesney Hawks Bottom. It's the marvellous Mike with a food-related game, I believe. Is that correct, Mike? No. No? OK, well, I've got that wrong. That's, uh, <laughs> that's why I said peachy. <laughs> Game of the week. So we're going to be playing Who's a Kazoo? Right? Because I can play the kazoo, Dominic. <laughs> we had a previous show where I tried and failed, didn't we? Uh-huh. A lot. I don't know why people can't play kazoo. Anyway, um, so I'm going to do a song in the kazoo, and you have to guess what it is. Okie dokie. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and keep the era appropriate, but I can't guarantee it. Are you ready for the first what, what, what does that era appropriate? We, any era is appropriate. 17th century is... I'll do a song from the 17th century, will he get it? Well, let's find out. Okay. Very old, very old song now. I'm speechless. I, I don't <laughs> Well, that sounded like the tune that I shall have playing uh, as I walk down the aisle to meet uh, my, my one and only beloved on our wedding day. I think it's Chesney Hawks. 
What, your beloved or the song? <laughs> the song. It was the one and only. It was Chesney Hawks, the one and only. Correct. Yeah. Magnificent. You need a moment now. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Next one. Right, so I've no idea. The um First bit just sounded like, you know, some preschool TV show where like characters are just like having a nap, like Pingu underwater or something. Like it didn't sound like a melody. It was just a uh, nap really like. It's just George and Zippy from Rainbow, just like in the swimming pool. That's what it was. But then you started doing a tune and you stopped. Do, do, start from the bit you stopped on and carry on from there. We've got a limit on how much we can do. Oh, okay. It's just recognisable when I do it. Um, well, you've got to do the recognisable bit for me to have a, a chance of doing it. Because you won't get it from the tuny bit. I won't get well, I, I'm not getting it from George and Zippy in the swimming baths. Very unique episode of Rainbow you've got there. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, you're doing this bit again. I don't want this bit. That where, where you stopped. Yeah, this bit. Sounds familiar, that bit. Um, you go back into the same bit again because it's quite a, a very shouty song. Mmm, okay. I think you've chosen stuff that I like, and I think I'm going to kick myself. You are. Oh, I've got no idea at all. Go on. I'm going to do it slightly less kazooey. Yeah. Break the pressure. Come back to the same old sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it, Dominic? It's breathe by by um, Keith and Maxim of the Prodigy. Correct. Excellent. 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 Yeah. But I mean, yes. it, is, it is essentially, it is just two blokes talking. I think Keith and Maxim are not dissimilar to uh, Zippy, Zippy and George, George talking from... underwater. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and who would have thought it figured? Yeah, now, no, just because I've sung it, I don't know who sang it or what the name is. I just know, I recognise it. Who would have thought it figured? Do you know the name of the it's song? It's a woman, isn't it? It's a woman. Do you know the name of the song? It's a woman. It is a and woman. And it's not a British woman. She's got an accent, hasn't she? She's got an accent. <laughs> She's a foreign woman. She's Coming <laughs> over it, stealing our number one spots. <laughs> Didn't realise I had someone from it figured. figured. Um, Play Mr. Play It Safe was afraid, afraid to fly. fly. He packed his suitcase, kissed, kissed his kids goodbye. I, he waved his heart. As the plane crashed life. down, thought, isn't it? And isn't it ironic? The Alanis Morissette. Yes. Hey! Well, I think I'm going to score myself um, two I out of three because I got one correct and I got two halves. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's pretty yeah. good. Are there, are there others? Is that? Is yeah, that... there's 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 more for you oh, to not let's get. Oh, do it! Yeah, yes. yeah. <sighs> right. <laughs> uh, limber it up well. Oh, um, next song. Mm. <laughs> 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 Story from A to Z. This is a British group. 
This what? is a 90s girl band. Uh, this is the debut and best song from the Spice Girls wannabe. Yeah, well, well done, you. <laughs> Only got it because they were a British band for British people. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Ooh. A beautiful song. Beautifully performed, Mike. Beautifully performed. Thank you. Oh. I'm going to tell you a fact before I tell you what song it is. Uh, should you go and read the lyrics of the song? They're really beautiful. It's such an upbeat song and it's all about death and so it's dying death. and getting on. It's Umbop by Anson. It is. Yeah. In an Umbop you're gone. Yeah, in an yeah. Umbop, yeah. Yes. What a yeah. deep song. Lovely, what, what a gorgeous... Uh, like teenage lads running around in the surf, having a great time, singing about being dead. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Next song. Okay, let's try and keep it to something you'll get. If I was doing like my favourite songs ever, one of them, I've never heard it on the kazoo before. <laughs> I've never heard it on the kazoo. That was a LGBTQ anthem. That was Nancy Boy, sung by the marvellous Brian Molko of Placebo. It was indeed. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. One of my favourite songs of Placebo. Right, um, let's see. Next one, let's go for... <laughs> Done now. I know it, I know it, Should but do. I can't think. Give me a clue. You very send me so. What? So what did you say? What? I did French. <laughs> got French bit in it. It's got a French bit in it. La disco, a joie de vous. Oh, it's Kylie, isn't it? Uh, it is Kylie. It's Kylie. It's Kylie, and it's um, a song that was not a single in the UK. It's uh, the Robbie Williams penned "Your Disco Needs You." Correct? No. It's not your disco needs you. It was. I just wanted to see <laughs> how much doubt I could put in your brain. Um, I'm done. Well, please do stick around, everybody. Oh, Even after that, stick around, stick around, stick around. Uh, coming up next, we are going to get our cooking lesson with Everyone Loves Fanny. Hello everyone, welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now we are going to get to grips with delights in the kitchen because everyone loves Fanny. Everybody loves Fanny. So I said to him, no, I'm not having it again because if you pull out, oh, hello. Welcome back to my kitchen. How are... Dominic, it's the first time we've met. How are you? I'm all the better for, for seeing you. This is very exciting. I can't wait to see what we're going to make. Yeah, Mike, Mike's been telling me about your love of bottoms. Um, and that you've been drooling over my little chocolate nibbins. I definitely are. I mean, you know, you've given me some utensils. And when I think of Chesney Hawk's bottom and this... It's a different kind of whisk. <laughs> Who are we getting on this <laughs> show now? Seriously, we've got this. <laughs> 70 year old bottom. Um, okay, so what we're going to do today, because I've been told you're a vegan. Correct. Yes, um, because um, the, the phrase is, how do you know if someone's a vegan? They will tell you. My God, will they tell you. <laughs> um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a chocolate mousse. 
out of nothing but vegan materials. Marvellous. Yes. Um, and it's actually quite an easy recipe because it contains just three ingredients. Just three ingredients. Okay. So in front of you, you should have your, your cup of big tall glass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. This is your vessel to which your, your deliciousness is going into. Okay. Okay. So we're going to mix, prepare and consume from the same vessel. Okay. Lovely. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is you've got some very, very hot water. Very, I need to be very, very hot water. Okay. Very hot water. Okay. You want to pop just a little bit of the very hot water into your vessel. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Like ooh, ah, just a little bit. Right. Okay. Here we go. Ooh, okay. ah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Let me see. That's that's too much. Okay. You want you want you want a, a, a mere thimbleful of hot water, realistically, to start with. Okay. Um, and then into your hot water. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> so it's going to be here all day. You, what, what might... Is that good? Let me see. Hold it up to the camera so I can see. Yeah, it's that. Where is it? Whee! Camera, hold it up to one. That, that will do. <laughs> um, and then into that, you're going to add some of your chocolate nibbins. Okay. okay. How many? Just, just, just some. Not all of them. Just <laughs> Thank some. you for your uh, specifics. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> um, because what's going to happen is the hot water is going to start to melt these. Oh. Okay. Um, and as it does, you want to, to add air. So we're going to whisk them. Right. Okay. So don't put the whisk in like this. No. Always start by putting the whisk in and then turning it on. Okay. Okay. And it will start off very slowly. And then it'll start to get quicker as it, as it loosens the chocolate. Go. Oh my gosh. Is it whiskey? It is. It is. This okay. is. Uh, this is very like. This is proper grown-up stuff. This is. You know, boiling water and a whisk. Whiskey and fucking mixing. Oh my gosh! No messing now. No messing. Pay attention. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're going to be doing that. And then once it's melted, you're going to add more of your chocolate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And repeat the process. So, chocolate into the hot water. Okay. And then whiskey whisk. Right. Yeah. Oh gosh! It's a bit scary, Fanny. Why, why? Why is Fanny scaring you? Because it's boiling water and it's all bubbling everywhere. Well, that's I don't want to get scalded. I told you to be, and only use a very little bit, and that's why it's quite a tall vessel. You see? You are wise, Fanny. I, I am very wise. Yes. Actually, did you say wise or wise? <laughs> wise. Oh, I thought you called me a wise, a wide fanny. That's not very kind. <laughs> Accurate though, isn't it? Yeah. You're a, a fanny of a perfect width. That's all my husband says. Says fucking bad. <laughs> and yes, lovely. Um, so yeah, you're just going to keep whisking, and, and it's going to get harder to whisk. Okay. And what's happening now is because the the fats and the things in the chocolate are dispersing into the water. It's taking it very seriously. Um, <laughs> I'm paying attention. I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to cause any harm to anyone. Well, <laughs> least I'm of all myself. I'm quite far set. away. I'm quite far away. So you're quite okay. Mm -hmm. Cause as much harm to yourself as you like. Um, and now at this point, my whiskey's starting to struggle because it's becoming so thick. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loose. I've, I've given you a little spoon. So you can give it a loosen at the bottom if it starts to get too, right. too much in trouble. Okay. I'm going to add... And then... When you get to the point where no more chocolate will dissolve, you need to add a little bit more water. Now, you need to add a little bit of water, oh, no. don't you? So don't add lots, just a little bit. Okay. And then re-whisk. There we go. I'm going to spoon the hot water in. There we go. There's an idea. Yeah, I don't trust myself. Because what's going to happen is that the, the amount of chocolate that you have and the, should get to about halfway up to the second half part of the, the handle on the cup. Okay. Again, it's getting a little bit thick, so I add some water to loosen. There we go. Now, are you aware of what flavour profiles are, Dominic? Flavor profile. Flavor profile, of course. Oh, You're this sounds like something clue. people might do on the apps. Is it? Is it a? Uh, is it a rude thing, Fanny? It's a cookery thing. Oh, okay, right. Pervert. 
<laughs> no, this is this is about the 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 balances of salties and sweets. Oh, okay. And that sort of thing. Okay. Um, let's see how far you're at. Um, you've stopped whisking. Oh, sorry, I was still. <laughs> Right. Okay. So now we're going to now we're, now we're going to. I've got mine dissolved. Okay. Is yours fully dissolved now? Uh. Yes. Okay. Now what we need we need a slight thickening agent. Okay, and something that balances the very sweet chocolatey flavours we have there with a slightly salty flavour. Oh, Fanny, I'm a bit nervous about this. Go on. Okay. So once you've stopped whisking. Right. Okay. Um, in the cupboard next to you, you have our secret ingredient that I use on every every recipe I do. The cupboard. The cupboard just to, behind your left shoulder. That's it. The other left. Oh right. dear. Right. Yeah, okay. It's so it's my favourite secret ingredient. In here. There we go. Just oh. a little bit of semen. <laughs> Your, your flap is wide open though, Dominic dear. You might want to close your flap. Oh. Shows everybody the air freshener because of the um, fetid smell. Um, so we don't need a lot of the semen. Okay, you maybe need about two teaspoons. Of <laughs> so you just, just gently pour this lovely boy batter into your teaspoon like this. Oh, oh, of course it's got little bits of lumps in it. Um, it's very fresh. The fresher your semen is, the better. Okay, and I like to use organic semen. Now, from what I understand, from what I understand, um, bodily fluids are vegan. Is that correct? Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, so your, your semen is also vegan. So once it's in, you just give that a whisk in too. Okay, and you'll notice your, your colour slightly changes. It goes a little bit lighter. Okay, yeah. and it gets a little bit thicker too because of the natural proteins that are in semen um, thicken the <laughs> thicken the liquid. Up. <laughs> No, I, I think I, I think I might pop a little bit more semen in, just just because. I'm a, I'm this a... has all gone a very different direction to our, how I was anticipating. Oh 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 oh! Oh! Uh... Hmm. Why? Okay. Um, there we go. That's much <laughs> thicker. That's much better. And uh, once that's all mixed together, okay, we're just going to pop that in the fridge, okay, leave it overnight, and then you've got a lovely vegan chocolatey dessert. And you know what? That's delicious because everybody loves Fanny. Everybody loves Fanny. <laughs> I'm so scared. That is excellent. That is, that's really good. Mm. That's really good. I'm, I'm impressed by Why this. did I ever doubt you? Mm. Not me, Fanny. Never me, <laughs> always Fanny. You should always trust Fanny. Mmm, oh my word. The, yeah. I, I would not allow myself to have this in the house. I would not. Would you not? I would not. I would never, I would never go out again. <laughs> this would be my only activity, eating this. Yeah, 100%, I completely mm. agree with you. Oh my gosh. No. Oh. No, stop it. Who ever knew it was such a versatile ingredient, Mike? Mm. I know, versatile is not the word I would use. <laughs> that's almost the end of the show. Remember to look out for our social media. We're at The Could TV. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Look for Chewing The Could. Thank you for watching us. Goodbye. Bye. I have finished mine.